In a court filing, they say that Ruth wrote a letter that starts this way, quote, this was an assassination attempt on Donald Trump, but I failed you. I tried my best and gave it all the gumption I could muster. It is up to you now to finish the job, and I will offer $150,000 to whomever can complete the job. Ruth allegedly wrote these words at least several months before September 15th, when he, prosecutors say, pointed a rifle in the direction of the former president as he was golfing. Court documents say the letter was in a box that Ruth left with an unnamed person who opened it in the days after the assassination attempt. With us now to discuss, we have CNN senior law enforcement analyst Andrew McCabe and defense attorney Misty Maris. Let's begin, though, with CNN's Caitlin Polance. Um, Caitlin, this hearing that has been going on for quite some time. Tell us what's happening. Yeah, it's been two hours and 20 minutes since this hearing was supposed to start in court in Florida. We have no word on what has happened so far in court because there's no cameras there and there's such heavy security around that building. No in and out. Nobody can be coming out to tell us what's happening. What's going on in that hearing, though, as far as we know, is prosecutors are trying to convince a magistrate judge sitting in this federal court that Ryan Ruth should stay behind bars. Right now, he's facing two charges uh, around possession of a firearm, but they haven't taken the additional evidence through the grand jury to indict him. And all they've done so far this morning is file a uh, this 10 page report of other evidence that they're gathering. They say it's not everything that they have, but what they think should be enough to keep him behind bars as they continue investigating, continue to consider additional charges against Ryan Ruth uh, and the need to potentially take him to trial. They even said in their filing that they did not set forth all of the information and evidence they have known. And prosecutors are very likely pointing out to the judge all of this other stuff they've found about Ryan Ruth, all of the planning he apparently did to place himself at Mar-a-Lago for quite some time, seemingly waiting for Donald Trump to arrive there. Kind of cell phone uh, records indications that he was uh, around Mar-a-Lago, that he was around the golf course, but also that he had his passport at the time, a Google search on one of six phones to try to figure out how to get to Mexico. There's so much in this filing. Tell us about it. Yeah, so 10 pages, they lay out what they found after he was apprehended and from a witness that contacted him. So after Ruth left the golf course, he was he was he met made eye contact with the Secret Service agent at the sixth hole just before Donald Trump was coming up uh, to that hole to play the round of golf. And in Ryan Ruth's car, after they stopped him on the interstate, he fled in the car. They found six cell phones, including one with a Google search of how to get from Palm Beach to Mexico. They found extra license plates. Uh, they also found a list of Trump appearances that he had had. Uh, and then they looked into his cell phones and they show that he was around Mar-a-Lago for a full month before this incident occurred on September 15th. In addition to that, a witness reached out to law enforcement and said, you know, before the 15th, Ryan Ruth dropped off a box at this witness's res residence at his home, and it had a lot of things in it, an am ammunition, a metal pipe, miscellaneous building material, tools, four more cell phones. So that's at least six cell phones in total that Ryan Ruth had collected and had at various times. And then that letter addressed to the world saying that it was an assassination attempt of Donald Trump that he was trying to make here. Yeah, and offering a sum to someone else to keep it going, which is just so alarming as he's putting that out there, you know, with the environment that we see happening. Um, Caitlin, thank you so much for the details. I want to bring in uh, Misty and Andy to talk about this. Uh, Misty, as you have prosecutors trying to convince the judge that this person who at this point so far is facing limited charges should remain behind bars, uh, as legal proceedings continue, how difficult a process do they have when it comes to that? 
prosecutors in this case, according to this detention memo that we saw, this is a case that's going to be more favorable to the prosecutors with respect to holding him. The reason being what we're looking at in a detention hearing and what a judge is going to take into consideration falls really into two categories. One, is this person a flight risk? Well, we've learned from this memo that he was found with passports, travel documents. He was searching a path to Mexico and he had already fled fled the scene right from the get-go. So as far as being a flight risk, there's a lot to add with respect to that argument. And then the other component, is this person a danger? And they're going to be looking at the fact that he had these guns. He was in possession of them illegally. Also, the letter that we saw, the fact that he's calling for basically a bounty if he was unsuccessful, that this was premeditated, that he was lying in wait. All of that is going to go into that bucket of whether he's a danger. And to Caitlin, she brings up a great point. There hasn't been a grand jury indictment yet. And what I think is happening right now, he's being held on a criminal complaint with respect to these gun charges. You're likely to see the indictment include more than just the gun charges, perhaps the federal crime of a assassination attempt of a major political candidate. So a lot of moving parts, and that's likely why this hearing is a bit more extensive than we usually see at the bail uh, the bail part of the, the case. And Andy, we also learned a few more details. We, we'd already known some about how events played out on the day of September 15th on the golf course, but prosecutors revealed that Ruth had this direct line on the sixth hole green which was the next hole that Trump would have played, presumably would have been standing around, standing still at some point doing that to putt. He had, uh, Ruth, a list of these dates and venues that Caitlin was detailing where Trump was expected to appear in the lead up to the presidential election. How does that go towards more potential charges? Well, Brianna, so the, their their challenge, today's challenge, of course, as Misty laid out, is to keep him in, locked up. And for all the reasons she mentioned, I think they're, they'll be successful in that effort. The longer term issue is what are they going to charge him with beyond these two firearms offenses? <clears throat> Excuse me. They certainly want to get to an attempted assassination charge. It's a little bit challenging under the federal code because he wasn't the president at the time. So there's there's sort of different uh, different uh, laws that you have to look to there. But all the evidence you mentioned goes directly to intent. They have to show that his intent that day was to actually assassinate uh, former President Trump. He didn't take any specific actions. He didn't fire a shot and miss or try to attack him or something like that. So they have a little bit of a hurdle to get over there. The letter will be really devastating evidence against uh, Ruth uh, in that regard. I think also of interest is the fact that we now know he was in the area for a month and was seen, of course, near Mar-a-Lago, which is the president's residence and other places in the area. This goes to answering those questions we had on day one about how did he know to be in that place at that time? And many of us suspected he probably knew it from doing very rudimentary surveillance. It's not a hard thing to figure out. The president is very uh, predictable in his movements and going to his golf clubs at the same time on Sundays when he's when he's in town. So that picture, I think, is really starting to come together for prosecutors as well. And it answers the question to some extent as to whether or not he had any help with that intelligence. At this point, the answer looks like no. Yeah, Misty, how damning is that cell phone data to show where he was? This is something that comes up in court, it's not exactly precise, but it can be very much illuminating as to someone's approximate whereabouts. Absolutely, it's going to be a large part of the case because as was just stated, it's all about establishing intent when we're talking about charges that go beyond the firearms felony charges he's currently facing. So to the extent we're getting to an attempted assassination, you don't get off the hook just because you fail to follow through and actually commit the crime. But an attempt crime, because it's unsuccessful, has legal challenges to prove that intent factor. And that cell phone data, the fact that this was pre-planned, those are the, going to be the allegations. And what happens is all of that goes before a jury and a jury is asked to use their common sense and look at the totality of the evidence. So the cell phone records, the letter, and just the actions of Ruth that day, all of that is going to 
be in furtherance of establishing that intent element from the prosecutor's perspective. And Andy, I wonder, have you seen anything to indicate that Ruth should have been on law enforcement's radar before the assassination attempt as some kind of risk to the president? You know, Brianna, in, in the information that we have publicly, I don't believe there's anything that really jumps out to say the Secret Service or the FBI or law enforcement in general kind of missed an opportunity to head this off. Now, again, we don't know all of the evidence that they have. Maybe that exists and it's just not been disclosed yet. Uh, there's no question he was a dangerous individual. His run-ins with uh, law enforcement, I believe in North Carolina, where he fled from a traffic stop, and ultimately was uh, took a felony charge for possession of a weapon of mass destruction, an explosive device. I mean, clearly an unbalanced and dangerous person. Um, you know, he pretty much dropped off the radar at that point by moving to Hawaii. It's not clear, even though he was fairly visible in his support for Ukraine and his travel over there, none of that is illegal. None of that is aggression directed at a president or a political figure. So at this point, I don't think we have enough information to say that uh, a ball was dropped here, but it'll be interesting to find out the full extent of what the government knows as this case goes forward.